What's going on, Untrendy World? This is your boy, Untrendy, here with another episode. We got Dr. Green Thumb in the house, in the real Caesar J, and Uncle Curtis on the side over here. We about to get into some talks, see what's going on, and see what's smoking on. So, let's start off with what we smoking on right here. Big Caesar rolling up some. Got some of my empires. Nice little Scotty Pippen over here. Oh, let me see that right there. Scotty Pippen. So why the name Dr. Green Thumb? Not doctor, just Green Thumb. Oh, just Green Thumb. My bad, my bad. So why Green, green Thumb? Copyright. Oh copyright. yeah, we don't want no copyrights. No, no okay. it's, it's Green Thumb because you know what we do, man. We we cultivate, we grow, we want to get high, we want to. It's all about the green, in one way or another. You know, just saying the weed to let you know. You know, uh, Green Thumb was also a homage to, of course, Cypress Hill. You know, our, our, our main Green Thumb addicts, our, our weed music that we grew up on. Right. You know, uh, of course, bouncing off the main. You know, <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, you know, but it's where all our fingers are every day. Okay. Uh, it, it's where we are at. Um, no, but he's got Green Thumbs right now. Right now. Green Thumbs yeah. right now, <laughs> Green Thumbs. <laughs> you know, so that's how it starts. So how long have you been Green Thumb? Well, when did this come about? Was this something you always been? Oh, we've been Green Thumb since we were 13. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, we've been in the culture since kids, but, you know, coming out as a, as, as trying to be in the part of the culture, part of the movement, coming out, we've been out for what, about 16 months? You know, just trying to establish not, not just a, a, a name, but just, just establish a presence. Hey, here we are. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're something not just not just to be informative and not just be participant, but to also be informative. Let you know what we're doing, how we're doing it, what's going on with the products that we offer, let's, what's going on and how to use our products. Right. You know, what they're intended for. Uh, it's just, as we were talking about earlier, it's, it's just put on its level, uh, if you want to take it that way. Uh, there really hasn't been a, a goal for anything. Right. It's just here we are. It's just a mission of just being there every day, being available, um, you know, making the right connections, and getting with the right people, the right patients, the right customers or patients, as we say, right. um, and, and just have a good time in between. You know, as Green Thumb, we want to use the new slogan of that we smoke all we can and we sell the rest. Right. And that's true. Shit, I smoke a lot. <laughs> Don't be I have to medicate a lot, man. I have to be medicine a lot, man. Right. Um, you know, and maybe that's because of past trauma, traumatic experience, emotional damage type shit. But that's what we're here for, right? Uh, you know, I've learned a lot over the past six months, that over the past my smoking career since I was a kid, that you pick up on this, you pick up on that. We're actually learning that. Right. We actually know more now. We know what we're taking into our bodies. Okay. Uh, we know what we're feeding ourselves with. Right. Uh, and how to feed ourselves with. You know, what, what's going to get you stuck and what's going to make you move. Okay. Um, that's the green thumb way. Man. That's the green thumb way. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's I the like green thumb that's way. That's the green thumb way. Speaking of the green thumb, what's, how do you feel the, the importance of branding is <laughs> at, um, in today's climate? Like, Branding yourself, getting yourself out there. How important do you think that is? Well, it's not your name anymore. Right. It's not just a hood name anymore. You're not just on the block trapped. You're, right. not, you're not out your house with the gate behind the gate. You know, telling people, what's up? Go to Little Smokey's house. Go to Little Joey's house. Go to Caesar's house. Right. You know, go to the spot. Go to the trap. Oh, you know, I don't want to go there no more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of seeing, I'm tired tired of seeing all the people standing around. They don't like me. Fuck that. Right. You know, or that I don't know. You know, uh, if people don't want to deal with, I guess, the bullshit in between anymore. Right. You know, people want customer service now. People want to be cool with your plug, be cool with your man. Right. You know, th you want to be able to talk to your person, your plug about, or if you want to say your medicator, uh, about your product just a little bit. Hey, man, what's this going to do? Right. You know, how sticky is it? You know, I don't want to just give my money away anymore. I don't want to just, here you go, I'm going to get what I get. All right, Fingers great. crossed, hope it's good. Hope it's good. good. Hope it's not compressed and seedy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I can put this on the stove, loosen it up. Hit it with the fire. <laughs> right. uh, no, what kind? What kind Bro. is this? Then my favorite part is is going up to somebody into their spot, 
Hey, hey, what kind is this? I don't care what kind it is. Just take it. Right. The fuck? Uh, what is this? And you get there, it's a low. You get there, it doesn't burn white. It's right. not white ash, you know? You, you get there, it's not what you paid for. It's not what your hard-earned money mm-hmm. goes to get you for your medication. Yeah. And you're stuck with shit. Okay. You know, so the ability nowadays to have a brand, going back to that, for somebody to rely on a brand, right. that they're going to go to this particular shop. This particular store, this particular guy, whether it's on this part of town, that part of town, at this pop up, that pop, they're gonna have quality. Exactly. They're gonna get choices. their customer service. Choices. They're gonna get their choices. They're gonna get their difference in, in what they can afford as well. Right. Affordability. Not everybody's got fucking uh, exotic money. Try to exactly. su- try know? to supply the best for your price. The yeah. best for your price. Okay, but you also need to understand, and people need to understand. Cheaper is not always better. Right. Uh, okay. That's that fine and that's line. A problem that we have a lot these days. Here these days. Yeah. Well, that's well, that no, fine line. It's side too. Expensive is not always better. It's not always better. better. with expensive fine stuff yeah. that is not as oh, good yeah. as some of the cheaper stuff. Exactly. So I guess it just depends on really what your pocketbook and what's your level of smoking is at this point. Yeah. Well, when you get, get to that to point, point yeah, when you get to that point, because back to your brand, it gets, oh, well, that brand is too expensive. Well, right. that brand's uh, that brand is. Yeah. Well, that one's gonna be trash. And this brand or is that. that. He's not sending me trash. Am <laughs> I gonna go there for them? Why don't you send me trash? And you know my brand is trash. Right. And my brand is trash. Fuck it. You know, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> but one day, my brand will be trash. Exactly. One day, my brand will be elevated exactly. to what standard? That's up to the public. Right. I can say it's this. I can say it's that. I can, what wishful thinking this, optimize this, optimistic that, until it's that point, until the public says so. Right. We're trash. Okay. We're just here. So speaking <laughs> on the brand, speaking on green stuff, tell us about the shop and the merch and what y'all have to offer. Right now, just flower, vapes, uh, nothing for sale, so to speak. Right. That's right. Where we right, get right. Um, but you know, offering a variety of uh, us most most definitely a, what is it the cyclobins, cycle goblins. The goal in the next few months is really to push in-house brands. In-house brands. Okay. Um, not the commercial. We all got the commercial. The more homegrown. The more homey. Okay. You know, we want to be a stage for people that doesn't have it. You know, show us what you got as long as the quality of follows it, you know, because a lot of the stuff that you have right now, commercial is not safe. Right. And a lot of times you see these people buy this stuff and everybody buys it because it's cheap. And a lot of times I hear, but it gets me high, but you don't know what you're getting high off of. Exactly. Right. That's like Wouldn't you up. rather pay for something and know what you're getting high off of? Like the and just throwing your right money, you're throwing your money up in the air and just say, hey, then hopefully I just. And that's going back to relying on the brand. Relying yeah. on the brand. So if you know this brand is selling you trash to, you know, it's homegrown, even though it was some grown, because I've, I've traced some some grown amazing flower oh, right. Right. in the past week. Okay. You know what I mean? Compared to some of this $80, $100, $3.5, $8. Yeah. You know, it put it to shame. So uh, speaking on that, why push local over big corporate or big dispo type branding? I had a saying before I went to prison this last time. We were starting to start a brand that was going to be called The Table. Right. So everybody could eat. Okay. Because there's something out in this world that you can never keep. And there's a lot of it for everybody and everyone. And there's just no reason to ever fight over, over it because it's too much of it. Right. Everybody knows it. Right. right. Why not give it to your house? Why not feed your home? Right. Right. Everybody already has their exquisite in Cali. You got Oklahoma. You got, you got amazing growers. You got amazing products here in Houston. Yeah, right. You know, but Houston, nobody Texas. knows. Nobody Texas. knows about it. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you in a few years, it'll be up to par. Right. Correct. You know, because I've met some of the best chocolate makers. Right. You know, I've met some of the best flour. And I mean, that was sun grown. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, yeah, I was like, wow, really? You know? Now, speaking of that growing in competition, how do you feel about legalization in the medical field once mm-hmm. once Texas uh, legalized it? Seeing that we already had one of the best and biggest Texas you know, medical fields out there, 
how do you feel legalization will even improve on that? I'm, I'm, I'm for yeah. the I'm more for the black market. It'll be the death of a small pack. Yeah. It'll be the death of a small pack. It'll be a war. Right now, it's 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 been said many times. We're wild wild western right now. Right. Okay. Before it, it, we've already been wild western for the past thirty years. Right. Thirty years. Okay. We're talking about people that've been with the three peaks, persecuted, probation, <laughs> and prosecuted. <laughs> okay. So. Moving forward from that, this is where we're at now. Okay, we're in a glory day. Right. Okay, now everybody's tripping. Everybody's making money. Everybody, you know, whether you set up at home or set up in a bed, right. somebody's doing something to hustle and make money. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. When it goes legal, yeah, people are gonna trip. The recession's gonna hit. Inflation's gonna hit. These little pop-up shops that are establishing themselves now as hemp stores right. are gonna flip in a night. I mean, with a flick light switch. Right. And it's now we sell weed. Yep. <laughs> and we already are established. We already have a building. We already have security. What do you got? Right. Oh, we're regulated. Now we're the, here's the new catch. What did they do to small vendors in California? Right. They let the feds loose on them. They got raided so much. People get raided so much just for trying to be the black market little guy. Right. There is no more. Let's have glory. Let's have fun. So, legalization in Texas, death of the small tech. I, <clears throat> I don't see recreational legalization coming for right. quite a long time, and not for reasons most people would imagine. Okay, and why do you say that? Okay, I work in an industry that provides a service and a material to the medical industry. And in Texas, being independently, Texas itself, the 40th largest country in economy or something like that on the planet, right? right. Or like 40th biggest country, but then even higher in economy. And it's mostly because oil and gas. Right. And oil and gas feeds the country medical state. community. <laughs> <laughs> we are a country, but not a state. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, I was watching this thing that said that if Texas seceded from the United States, it would oh, be, the be, 40th, the, yeah, yeah, be, be the 40th yeah, be the 40th largest country in the world. Okay. Yeah, we dig and enough. Like, yeah, even higher like within, like, its own economy and stuff. Even higher than the United States. Like, like, it's crazy. Like, like, just the numbers are obscene, right? And, and most of it's because we're oil and gas. Right. Mm-hmm. And oil and gas feeds everything, whether yeah. people like it or not, right? It's the paint, it's the electronics, it's the medicines. Right. So now you've got oil and gas companies and you've got the pharmaceutical companies. And <coughs> it, it, it's a battle. Like, it's more money than people know about. So uh, do you think, how hard would the impact actually be if legalization hit to the medical field, knowing that most things that's wrong with people right now can be cured with the help of hemp or THC or most medical diagnosis can be they don't know. not only cured, but, you know, I mean cured, but or just a healthier way of living. With okay, it. so we got legalization in a whole lot of states already. Right. But you look at your TV at any point in time, if you have cable television, what commercials are you seeing more of? Medical commercials, pill commercials, like pill drug commercials? commercials or are you either. seeing natural remedy commercials? Because they can't push it federally. Still a doctor, mm-hmm. the state can be legal. Yeah. Right. But, but medically, it's they go by the federal mandate. DEA, right. Drug Enforcement Administration. Right. You know, the FDA, they go by all those, those regulations and those red tapes. That if, if a doctor were to say right now in the state of Texas, I prescribe you marijuana, unless it's already that medical marijuana doctor already listed right. with the with the, all these regulations. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Um, unless he's already registered like that to say that right. here in Texas, mm-mm. no, no, they're not going to say that. They're going to push a pill. Right. They're going to push, uh, you know, the antibiotics first. They're going to push the topical cream first. They're going to push all this other bullshit. Right. Sick people make money. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I personally went through with my own mother. We just realized, hey, you don't have diabetes. Right. After 30 fucking years of taking the medicine, you're not even supposed to be fucking taking them. Oh, shit. What the fuck? But what I mean, that's, that's so common that it's not surprising, right? It's like everybody what knows the somebody fuck? who's been prescribed the wrong shit. Look at this diagnosis. Like she almost my died eight times good. from insulin that she's not even supposed to be fucking taking. So what are y'all doing? 
what, who's saying you have diabetes? Who what the fuck are y'all really doing? Right. So you really want to take it a step into why they can't say this, why they can't say that? We know why. Right. Yeah. Hold on. I don't want we, we know why. Two shots yeah. to the head, suicide. There we go. <laughs> uh, but I, here we I go. Will never, will never. I never. Right? <laughs> 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 Make it clear. I've like, been perfectly sane. Uh, I'm happy. We'll get a new wave of doctors coming in that want to see ourselves. That like I've heard of doctors. Cannabis, like we are cannabis doctors. We want to see you healthy. We don't want you, you know, coming back. Just take your prescription, get your medical. But the thing is, is doctors are not trained. Unless it's a weed doctor that grew up smoking weed. Right. A holistic medicine doctor that actually has a PhD in medicine, they're not trained medically on the effects of marijuana. Okay, medicinally, so take, take that they're point. not trained on on. For example, you have a codex book of pills. Right. All right. Each pill is numbered and labeled. It tells you what it's going to do. You can read the definition on the pill from codeine to aspirin. Right. Okay. To this to this twenty thousand dollar pill that you can take for for HIV, to cancer. Right. Okay. I can't remember the name, but it costs twenty grand. It's right there in the book. Right, but there's not one diagnosis for marijuana. It's right. not in there. Okay, so they can't tell you, hey, it's going to treat your anxiety. It's going to treat your inflammation. It's going to treat your glaucoma. They figured it out that it does. Right. Okay, because of people telling you, hey, when I do this, this goes away. Okay. Okay. When it's I do this, or when I take it under my tongue, I stop fucking better. shaking. Right. My epileptic seizures stop. It doesn't hurt. Anymore. You know, we've seen it time and time again on multiple uh, video testimonies. Okay. Uh, what they can't do, doctors can't do, is they can't tell you that. They're right. not trained about it. Okay? okay, so when it does become legal as it is in California for them to medically prescribe it, I would assume, hopefully assume, God willing, optimistically assume, that that doctor understands, hey, I'm going to give it to you because of your arthritis. Right. Not because I'm going to give you this because, oh, you want it. Right. Okay? Well, too many people want it. It's like beer. Okay? How mm -hmm. can you take yeah. a want and a vice and call it a drug? Okay. Well, then you have to call beer a drug. And guess right. what? You have to call cigarettes a drug. Right. Then you have to call coffee a drug. Sure. Hold on, let's get even better. Caffeine a drug. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. keep it going. Cool. Let's yeah. keep it going. Then you have to actually diagnose all these things that we ingest every fucking day. See, caffeine is the biggest and most addictive drug on the planet. And because it's legal, no harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Yeah. Okay, but if you, you let a doctor try to tell you something. It's every word, yeah. Let a doctor try to tell you something. It's everything. You can have a monster and a frappuccino and a this and a five hour coffee shop. Five hour shots. Yeah. Heart attack. Right then, a girl just, that just happened to a young girl. What happened to me? No, she had a fucking coffee shop. Yeah, she had a fucking coffee shop. Six energy drinks, had a fucking heart attack, woke up in the goddamn mall thing. Yeah, scan the MRI. Yeah, the MRI was shit. They're like, so, fuck, how'd you die? And I'm like, I'm retarded. That's how I fucking <laughs> drank. I, I gotta go to work, motherfucker. That's how I died. Dude. I, was, I just bitch. came off the hinge offshore. Oh and my And I was God. driving back from New Orleans. And Oof. I slammed six energy drinks on the way home, driving back into Houston. And it was the middle of summer. I've done an eight ball on that trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been safer. Yeah, it would have been, been safer. safer to do an eight you know, ball. I swear to God. I was like, no, I know. Oh my God. I'm not saying I'll never eat more and walked away, but I ain't drank six energy drinks and walked away. I'm just saying I'm everywhere. I know how that drive is. You gotta test this theory a little more. Yeah. Uh, but no, going back, going back to the, will the doctors prescribe it? Well, it, it, they have to be versed on it. Right. They have to understand what it's going to attack, which ailments it's supposed to be attacked. Not to mention, there's the strain factor. This is where, as a as a store, as a brand, right. uh, as the the vendor, uh, I've been able to determine. You know, partaking, sell, smoke all we can, sell the rest. Method. Hey, this does this. Right. This does that. What are you looking for? Right. What is your personal ailment? Do you have it's a tender so knee? That. You know, what are you going to need? Right. Well, I tell you what. I tell you what. Wake up in the morning. Try one of my edibles. If you don't like it, money back guaranteed. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, and so far, nobody's called back. Right. Okay, yeah, nice. don't they get y'all don't get no idea. Uh, but program. <laughs> was only for a week. Okay. Uh, uh, no way, we'll call. All of a sudden, we start blowing up. Hey, you know, I, it's all gone. Uh, but uh, I didn't uh, like it. Uh, I right. ordered for like two months. Two ago. months later, yeah, two months, yeah, but, no, uh, you had a time frame. <laughs> uh, here's the fun part, uh, which which is coming. This is the fun part. Uh, when it does become legal. 
right. when it does become medical legal, well, it's already medical, it is medical. Technical, I have that in Texas. Uh, yeah. You know, how are, how are they really going to? And it goes back to, you got to trust the brand. Well, now you got to trust the doctor. Right. You got to right. trust that doctor's brand. Well, does he know what he's going to give you? And going back to what well, I was just about to revert to the strain. Mm-hmm. Now you got a strain war. Okay. Yeah. Which strain is going to cure your ailment and who's got it? Exactly. Well, okay. I just went back out to California in October, mm-hmm. right, to visit again. And I go out there and visit every so often. I used to live out there. Um, so there's a weird thing that happened, right? Everything goes recreational legal. Okay. People flood these dispensaries. You know, they open up everywhere. And it's like any business. A bunch open, some shut down. Mm-hmm. Some stay open. Some have it's good quality. Some have Franchise. good prices. Whatever, you know. But you still got all the tax bullshit, all that. It is what it is. But then we had this up and immediate just crash. People of, are over it. Yeah, oversaturation. And then you had all these problems with inconsistencies. So I was in a dispensary in October wearing a shirt of a friend of mine's business that owns a hemp-based business. Okay. And she goes, I love that stuff. My wife looked at me like, what the fuck? Did you hear what she just said? And I said, yes, I did. What? You, you know what this is? And she goes, oh, yeah, I love it. I'm like, you work here. Like, you work in a legit recreational marijuana dispensary. Right. And you're saying you prefer hemp products. She goes, yeah, because I know it's going to be consistent every time. Fucking floored. Standing in a yeah. dispensary, buying shit from her. Looking at the shit I just bought, like, oh God. <laughs> Do I really want to buy this? You work here you? and you're just saying out loud, like, no, we all know. If I would go to the hip store. Uh, yeah, okay. that everything got so oversaturated that now motherfuckers don't trust the stuff. Even the people that work there in the dispensary don't trust half the shit on the shelves because they're like, nah, man. No, this company started off, I was smoking this or eating this. And then the next one I got was, mm. And like, it's hit or miss. So I just have to say customer base, though. I say, like, I'm a new customer. I go up to a table where I'm looking for something that's been medically prescribed to me, like, let's say, headband. Or we just go use some headband as a string. He sells you headband, but that's not the real headband. He got somewhere else, blah, blah. But, I mean, you don't get prescribed the strings. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like, I took that string. That makes me feel good. So yeah, now that's I go your to string. the black market looking for this string. <laughs> and now I go to some table and I was like, hey, this yeah, is the strain, but I get home, this is not that strain. As an average customer, how does that affect my outlook on the whole market as a, as a whole? Well, it should say that you can only go to this guy for that strain. Right. That's what it should tell you off the muscle. Exactly. That if you went to somewhere else and they have it, but it ain't it, then you know it's a bootleg knockoff. Exactly. Which ultimately, once a popular strain hits, that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so you have to go look. Even the no names don't have that name. Yeah, yeah. no names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. twenty twenty three. Everyone they, they had cherry jelly. Yes, everybody. You no, know, I, I got to a point where, I, I, even before vending, before you know going, you know when it was only this homeboy had this shit because he had a home, a cousin in California. Right. You know, uh, okay, cool. What you got? And where I was questioning that. I saw him open the shit out of the UPS box, and I'm like, why does it look powdery? Right. You know, why does it look stupid? Took it home, had fucking seeds in it. That's Reggie to me. Yeah. Right. They said, I want to buy Reggie. I ain't going to Carlos down the street. I need to go to this particular homeboy. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I was doing. I was going to this particular homeboy each that's and every single time. I was denying all my other homeboys because he's had this guy. He had the LA. He had this motherfucker. And let me find out you were just... I'm not saying that's what he was doing, right. but you know, it, it got to a point where shit. For for me, it was okay. Well, what, how am I buying this then? Right. Well, let me find somewhere else. Exactly. Is there anywhere else? Cool. Come across another homeboy. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, hey, no incrimination. The, <laughs> we uh, and and we do have that here in this town, right? Anyway. Like, we have people who we have, go out of state and meet the different suppliers, like uh, authentic supply. Well, and then we have guys who just look online and they're like, oh, I see this advertisement. They go, they buy they, a bootleg product in the same package. They call it Fabrice. They, actually, <laughs> they believe this shit is what it says. Correct. And they're like, yeah, I got this for pennies on the dollar. And be like, no, you got something in a package. Correct. But what is going into your lungs is not that. 
You know, okay. here's the fun part. How do you determine a true connoisseur? How do you call yourself a true connoisseur? How can you yourself determine which strand is which strand, which strand without seeing any fucking names in front of you? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, you have to be able uh, to see, you know, judge by nug, yeah. pro- like, nug structure, by touch, by smell, by Correct. taste. You know, like any, and you like, see that there's a difference. Like a you, you, you have or to a wine have around. Correct. Correct. You have to been around that certain strand for so long yeah. to know, like to know that's not that. Things. Like off yeah. look, like yeah. without me, especially without me smoking that. But remember, we had this with uh V V uh VW Bud. Yeah, it was right. like we had a conversation of like two weeks prior. Like <laughs> nobody has no OG strands. Like anybody got OG. Yeah, strands. no shit. They nobody has. They are our own words. <laughs> Oh, shit, bro. Hey, some, uh, some white widows. Well, we like, yeah, let's smoke this white. Widow. <laughs> was it? This, this can't be it. And we oh, both looked at each other like, this is it. Like, <laughs> like, like, I said, how? what the? This is white, like real white widow. Like, see, and how? we just got asked that OG strands the other day for the original. Right. Kush. Yeah. We got OG Kush. What? I haven't heard that in, in years. What? What are you? Who are you? Well, I mean, he's a seventy-year-old yeah, man. Well, no, the guy that asked us was a kid. <laughs> I was like, "Who are you, man? Are you, who sent you? Who sent you? <laughs> Nobody asked for that anymore. Nobody asked. Is that a red flag that people are asking for OG brands, but OG I, strains? I would say it would before I met VW Bud. Okay, man. But now before you realize he had it, yeah. before I realized <laughs> he had it, and a grower like that is local. So knowing he's local too. And he's a grower. It's like if he's in that market with him, it's not yeah. unheard of for him to be like, "Hey, you got this," because he knows somebody yeah, who has does. that. You know, so it wouldn't be uncommon, yeah, sure. uncanny. It would, it, but it, for it, everybody else, it is. For everybody else, it's like, <laughs> well, I mean, everybody wants what? to be on the new shit, right? Even yeah. if the new shit is the old shit that nobody can get yeah. anymore. Right. So if you're the only group of people that can get that fucking Northern Lights and White Widow that is really good indoor grown still, Correct. that has been generational, and that old man that's been doing it for 30 years is still on his nitrogen levels and like all that Correct. shit, right? His right. pH balance is... Then, then you're the only guys getting it, and he'll tell you. Like, yeah. I only there's only going to be three, four ounces available. Yeah, and that's it. Period. Because well, I yeah, know because he had that. Uh, and then you got to wait again. And See? here it goes back to... Shopping it with the brand. Shop, yeah. Going to get it from a consistent brand with your consistent strain, with your consistent medical needs. Right. You know, all that fun stuff that comes into play. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it really all about the brand at that point then? Right. Or is it about what the brand offers? Exactly. You know? and, uh, and then once again, can they keep that consistency with their back-end vendor right. to pu- supply that table, so to speak? Exactly. You know? Uh, and then now it's... <sighs> You know, we're all wrapped up in one. Man, we touched so many little topics, left one a few, a few or two behind. <laughs> right now, uh, I will say when you when you collaborate, everything when you collectively collaborate, you know the the type of flower that's being pushed, right? Where it's coming from, then ultimately who you're getting it through, right? Okay, because you're not gonna go get it from the farm. Nobody's driving two three hours to wherever yeah, Texas. Real question: Have you tested you know, everything on your table? You got to be able to tell people about your table. So, yeah, you got to test it. We smoke all we can and we We sell the rest. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be on the table. Trademark. Well, usually, you know, like you're talking about getting local, usually that you're testing it before it's even considered to go on the table, right? Or any kind of event or anything. Once again, it's a personal relationship. Right. Now, see, I know people, and I should, I know people that be having polka dots on their table. I know Mm -hmm. people that have. Multiple tables. Multiple tables. And I'm like, I know you ain't set that price. I know you didn't sit there and eat one of these whole bars. <laughs> because <laughs> as a consumer, that's what I do. And that's what I tell people. Like, yeah, just go eat the whole mushroom bar. You know. But I'm not going to send them to your table if I know you got polka dot bars on your table. Yeah. That's Wait, you guys don't carry polka dots, do you? No, I don't like polka dots. I know they don't carry polka dots. Hey, I got some <laughs> they wouldn't even be here if they had polka dots. They're just a strong <laughs> It goes to, I'm not a big, uh, what is, would we call it, big uh, trip guy. Right. I'm not a big into big psychedelics. I got shit to do. Right. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the last time I took a psychedelic, man, I'm pretty sure I almost got stuck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that was funny. 
Uh, like, hey, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a big trip guy. I love so, that. But right now, that, right now, that green thumb, hey, I got to offer it. Right. To stay as a brand, to stay relevant, to stay with my my patients, right. uh, we have to offer a variety of holistic medicines, mm-hmm. straight up. Uh, so I have to be, a, well, what does it do? How can I describe this? How do I offer it and say, oh, I don't know, good luck. Exactly. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? It's what do you mean, tricky, good luck? Bro. Like, yeah. 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 I don't know what it does. Good luck. Uh, well, yeah. now I can say, yeah, we Take do know what breathe. it does. I can tell you this is the effect you're going to experience. Right. Uh, this is what you should experience. If you experience anything worse than that, then you call them, you know, the proper authorities. <laughs> but uh, no question no. when you get to the table, is, what are you really looking for? Correct. Mm-hmm. And can, yeah, we can have it in here and we could direct you to the proper place. Correct. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we're trying to do. You know what I mean? Right. I'm a, I want to direct you to the proper place, not misdirect you to, hey, this is shitty, it's almost good, it's almost bad. Right. Or I lost my money where he sent me, or this happened to me where he sent me, he's the one that sent me. Right. Know? To be a collector. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much what I believe everybody's already doing now. Right. When we get together with pop-ups, we are officially a collective, a hive. You know, uh, you know, where if once somebody, a, a patient goes up to one table, they can't find what they're looking for, they collectively go on to the next one. Yeah. You know, and, and same here. Yeah, go to our friends next to us. Right. You know, right. go to our buddy across the way, man. He's got probably what you're looking for. You know, the, they, the same thing's going to happen to you three times, four or five times over. Right. You know, it's, it's reciprocation. It's pay it back. It's pay it forward. It's the culture. Right. This is where we're at right now. Uh you know, for the culture to go legal, this would be our death. Straight up. Uh, well, you know, let's be honest. What you were just saying about, you know, directing people, like if you don't have exactly what they're looking for, because I grow a lot of things as a customer. Right. Like just as a, a consumer, customer, patient, like whatever, you know, because, you know, I've got my medical, but they only allow a limited amount of resources mm-hmm. for us here in mm-hmm. Texas right now, and it's just silly. But and expensive. Um, yeah. 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 Overpriced and limited. <laughs> so you know I go to events and I like the smaller things and I've talked to some organizers and stuff and that's some of the best stuff that I like is when you've only got like about maybe say 10 different vendors there right. and only like two of each you know like two people will have the same kind of thing right so it's all kind of spaced out like this person will have some homemade little cakes and cupcakes and like those kind of treats and then you know this guy will have some really good dabs and stuff like that and you know, little dab bar, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And then you know, you'll have a couple of guys that have a variety from some of your local mm-hmm. people that have made things or local businesses where they can display, you know, a variety of things. So, but you gotta think, I like when it comes to oh, yeah, the kind of store, there's it's only so many vendors out there that can really supply true connoisseurs in mm-hmm. our market right now, right. especially. Well, then that also goes to, that's why that connoisseur is so hard priced. Right. You're going to pay for what you get. Exactly. You know, when you go to that brand that believe, that not only just believes in it, that is offering true exotic, true, hey, here's what it is. And there's quite a few of those brands. Yeah. There are quite a few fews that I know. Right. They offer, their stuff is out there. Uh, yeah, it's pricey. Yeah, yeah it's way. worth it. I think we get hesitant on true for example, it's like buying that $2,500 bottle of brandy. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we get hesitant on buying $2,500 brandy because of, number one, guilt trip, guilt price trip. Right. Okay. Right. Oh, Everything shit. else is already expensive. Yeah, what like. the fuck? Uh, and then there's the, the fear. Is it really going to do what it says it does? Is it going to send me into an outer space like a $2,500 bottle of brandy? That's my biggest thing. Be the Here's fear the thing. A $2,500 bottle of brandy is going to do the same thing the $20 bottle of brandy does. Get you drunk. It just depends on the connoisseur. How are they able to taste the flavors and the rice and the spum? I mean, the, the rice and the spum. The rums and the spices. Excuse me. Uh, and, you know, the age, the wood. Are they going to take appreciation in, in how it was cultivated? Right. The way the exotic flower was cultivated. Exactly. The way that it was loved. The way that it was nurtured. Because when if well, I had mine. Why burn it and get high and watch exactly. TV? Are you going to do the $100 announcement? Then it'd be like, what's you know? the, it's so many brands that got so much hype behind them now, too. That's like, that's why you got to oh, find, yeah, you get this, you got to find that $100, brand. $100, $7, yeah. it's $157, it's gold, it's the You got to find that guy, or it's always that, that team, or whatever it is. a smoker. Yeah. 
I don't mind it because I feel I'm, it, it, it's upsetting when you don't get what you expected. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, man, it's, that's the market we're in right now. So you let me ask I mean? you a question off of that statement. Do you look at that vendor or shop with them differently after you have spent that much and didn't get what you expected? Oh, that's going to happen. It depends on that's how I was sold on the product. Okay. You know what I mean? So like if, if I was s- told the truth about the product, right, and I and and and, and, I, and, and there was nothing that, that I should be surprised about, I shouldn't argue that price. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But let's if we go back to the hundred dollar ounces. You know? Exactly. You got a lot of people asking for hundred dollar ounces. They get upset. They don't smell like two hundred dollar ounces. Right. You know you. you People yeah, don't understand like, that. I'm, 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 I'm a hundred-dollar an ounce guy where I'm yeah. just rolling blunts all day, yeah. Yeah. and I've been a hundred-dollar a quarter guy where I need a new piece of glass and yes. I need like a fresh bowl. You know, you to need like it to break really it in. Enjoy, yeah, you know, and not, not many people that could that tell that different. Way. You know, uh, I will say this: before the Thanksgiving break. Oh shit! This before the Thanksgiving break. We uh, I partook in our our boys' uh little spicy bread. Right. Little one twenty is little one twenty seven, right? Yeah. And uh, I used it over the Thanksgiving. Man, I enjoyed every fucking smoke of it. Right. I will, well, can I promote him? Yeah, go ahead. Our boy Zach Woods we'll, out there. We'll, we'll, wait, wait till uh, the we'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do it. We gotta do it fresh. I'm gonna cut a lot All right. of stuff. <laughs> All right, go uh, ahead. Our boy Zach Woods out there. He provided that juice that day, man. Fucking best chief, totally worth it. And yeah, I'm confident. If I go back to his table, when I go back to his table, right. you know. I know what I'm gonna get. Yeah, I know that that exotic is gonna be there. Yeah. Okay, just like if we go to any other table in this, you know, with with what we do, you're gonna expect with what you get. Right. Uh, if you're told the truth about it, especially, right? You know, especially we had that talk as we first started. Take us, take it back. Somebody caught the bag from us. Was kind of, you know, not too, not too overly excited. <laughs> he was an they ugly. Got what they paid for. They got what they paid for. Yeah. We broke it down to him. I was very honest with him. Here, here's what it's gonna do. Here's what you're gonna get. Matter of fact, here's some love. Um, right. <laughs> you know, uh, if he came back, yeah, I'm gonna up my game just a little bit. Just oh because. no, he came back. Okay. He definitely came back. Well, then what happened? No, I was, I was. The whole conversation was about levels. Okay. That it's nice to be able to know people that you can go to if you need a hundred dollar ounce. All oh, right. Right. Uh, and it's also nice to know people you can go to uh, when you need a hundred dollar quarter. Right. So it's yeah, just being able to once again as a brand for being able to provide that type of service. Right. Uh, I'm more in favor of a venue that you can talk to people in. Yes. That you can lean in and just a little born. Uh, I'm more in favor. I do like the small venues. But I also like the party venue too, man. Don't get it twisted. I'm a big ass kid, man. You're right, right, right. Uh, I, I like. The <laughs> 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 By the way, that last venue, the not the not the outdoor one, but the indoor one. Oh, thank you. That was yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank With you, the you. Marilyn Monroe pictures and stuff, and the mm-hmm. yeah, that was. I, I I called my mom. I was like, yeah, that's probably one of the dopest venues. Yeah, I yeah. bring her. Yeah, like Bring did they have chandeliers and shit in there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, I was I'm really, real. I was like this. But, uh, yeah. We're we gonna dress it up again a little bit. Uh, it'll be a th- get once we TBA. Uh, it'll be again on January tenth. Okay, uh, okay. Just pay attention to us. Uh, hopefully, we'll have a, a few more friends come out. Uh, we've got a few friends on the list right now. Then once you go on the list, we're on there. Everybody's there. What's up, everybody? What's yeah. up, to everybody? Uh, <laughs> at the moment, we're just looking forward to having a f- safe, secure, fun environment. Upscale just a little bit. It, it, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm saying, like, security was on point. Thank you. Right. The vibe was on point. The music was at a good level. DJ PP. Yeah. I actually got to stop and talk to several of the table vendors that I knew there. Right. That's where we met. Uh, <laughs> Right. And I met your tea. I met your tea. And I met your tea. Thank you very much. No problem. So definitely, we're doing it once again uh, a couple of more weeks. We'll let everybody know what's up. Um. <laughs> Uh, other than that, you got that was not hella good. Oh, speaking of fun, your Funko Pop collection. So tell me about the Funko Pop collection. Man, ah. it's extensive. It's extensive. Man, it's extensive. What's some of your favorite pieces in the collection? I got all the Seven Eleven slush boys. What? It's a, like a little collection that adds up to a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Dang. Got a couple of hundred dollar oh. ones, two hundred dollar ones. Okay. And how long you been collecting? Probably maybe like nine months. Nine months? Yeah. Dang. Keep them in the dipshit. It's been yeah, a stick. Yeah, it was like, what? I don't know what that is, but shit, now yeah, I feel like that's a important thing. It is, because somebody goes see it and be like, he got the what? Yeah, oh, we're ready for that little opportunity to where we see a lot of Funkos. Right. For between me and my son, and yeah, I didn't think it was going to be a thing to his life, but it is. <laughs> oh, it, it, it definitely is. Because you'd be like, bro, what's, what's hey, so important about this little toy in the box? But when we started looking at this, and they told me, one day I gave him a ride and I'm like, son, what are you doing with all these fucking toys? He goes, dad, look, let me show you something. He and you collect them words. and you got this thing right here and look and you scan them and pop, look that. I yeah. paid $5 for that, that's 80 bucks. I said, let's go shopping, son. Let's go shopping. And I haven't stopped since. <laughs> no, the resale value is crazy. Yeah, I do a lot of resale. The resale I do a lot of resale on, 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 on Google. Right I want my Bart Simpson back. Oh, yeah, I got you, Bart Simpson. Oh, yeah. They got a Bart Simpson. Bart, 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 yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I was about to get that one. Hey, he wanted a no, total. I, I got man. two Batmans. He can trade for a Bart Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want what the Bart Man. What are you talking about? I got two. You were telling me he was wanting a Bart Man. No, I got the Kellys. Is it if you trade into a Funko trade show? Hey, Funko trade. But say, some of the Funkos get up there. Like, I be. Look, I got gifted one. And when I scanned it and I said three hundred dollars for a toy, I'm putting this up. I'm putting this up. Which one is that? One? It's the Halloween one, the sign one. Which one? The Halloween. From Mike Michaels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the little knife and the pumpkin, not the one with the knife. Mm-hmm. I'm so you, bro. Cause I like. I still want the Ice Cube one. <laughs> the one with the they got green ice pollen. Cube. The one with the green yeah. pollen. I just never seen that one. I fucked up. I could have got that thing for twenty five dollars. That thing's going for like a one fifty now. Bro, like you should have got that. It's, it's, it's like the it's new trading cards. Yeah. yeah, basically, you know. And then you don't even open them. It's just like yeah. it's, they're right there. You just buy them, like just chunk them in a the box. And that's another a box. hell of like. I get, I get messages from people that are like, "Hey, do you have fun? So I have a collection, and, and like, I, even before I give them a prize, they'll be like, "I'll give you this." Okay, <laughs> I'll trade you what? I'll yeah. trade you. <laughs> and you meet so many people like that, and it's like, I like first couple of hundreds, then they made us what? Five racks. Man, what I is said, this man, I'm talking sticking about to this. dopamine and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. Why is it so like? <laughs> it becomes addictive. Why? Why is it so? It, they're just in a, toys in a box. Like, why is it so addictive? <clears throat> like, I, what makes I, it? What makes it like? Keep that the thing novelty. to go do the novelty of, the what, novelty. It is, of what it is. Yeah. It's just like any like collectible. A it's the rarity. It's right. the quality. Yeah. It's the it's it, any collectible is just saying I have the only one. Yeah, I, or, or, have, or I have like, one of them. Yeah, right. I right. have something that There's not nothing, very many yeah. people have. Ha ha. Yeah. That's it. It's a it's a total ego thing. Collectors, it's all about ego, and and that's okay because it's harmless most of the time. But do you think uh, magazines is still the number one collector item, or has it been passed up yet? I, 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 like I comic know. books, magazine. Cause I have. I think that's dead. You think it's dead it's by old now? Like, form, and then when it, they're valuable now, right? Because it's becoming older. They're becoming more rare. And if you have a stack of comic books, you better hold on to them for another thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> thirty years, they'll be worth more than what they are now. Right. Uh, baseball cards, the same. As you know, unless I don't, I don't see kids collecting this shit. Baseball I, cards. I do. I don't see kids collecting ones. And Dude, I lost a thousand baseball cards in Harvey. I lost Dude. so many baseball cards. Yeah, and like flooded out here. Thing. You know what I'm saying? So as time gets older, the the 1990s, the 97s, the 94s, now the Ken Griffey Juniors. If you got one, you better cherish that some bitch. Really, I actually really happen good. to have a Ken Griffey Junior rookie card. Hold on to it. You you know, I see it because it was like screwed into the plastic already, yeah. like the hard plastic. You better hold on to it. Yeah, but all my um, other, like my whole 84 series of Don Russ cards and all that shit, gone. I got that. See, and it's good. I, think, <laughs> I think the reason I kept them was because I never found anybody to value them. Right. So I just started saving crap and just left it back there. You, you stole and then whenever I came back, that's the only thing that was there. Oh, you stole a lot of mine when I came. No. Yeah, you did. You remember? I remember that. <laughs> I believe if you're under 18, Texas law it says count. finders keepers. No, no, it was ours, but it was just at my house. 
Oh, so they found it at your house. <laughs> <laughs> like, we found it at his house, but we just gonna bring it back to ours for safekeeping. <laughs> Alright, what are we smoking out here? This is that Empire Farms. Tell us about this Empire Farms. They a local grower? Um, They're more of a, of a Cali base. Okay. They're from Houston. Um, I met their product a few years through a vendor named Jackie. Okay. Oh, in Houston, Head Market had first started. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one of the first vapes that I was able to smoke because I can't oh. really smoke the stimulus. Right, right. I already can't smoke parts. Um, she gave me that one day and I tried it. I was like, man, my God, this is smooth. Yeah, very <clears> delicious. Right? And I, I didn't see it anywhere. My original or in many places. The Empire was the Halloween. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, you remember it? Mine's was the one before that. The, yeah, the, they had the, the Scarface. Willy Wonka, yeah, Scarface and the Willy Wonka ones. And they were supposed to give out the golden ticket. Yeah. You get the free okay. uh, the free OZ if you found it. Yeah. They yeah. had a few before, though. And said it's been, it's been, all their products have been enjoyable. And right. like I said, it's one thing that I can't smoke. Like we smoke all the time on a daily. Right. And uh, it's smooth. It's smooth, yeah. You know, like parts. It's, it's, it's. Safe and it fits everybody's pocket. Right, right. You know that's the best thing is not very expensive or inexpensive, right. and the quality is great. And a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people vouch for it. Yeah. You know. It's definitely nicer than the size of it, the actual cart size and all that. Yeah. It's, you, you don't expect yeah. it doesn't really look it's like a good a travel like because it looks more like a lighter. Yeah, it looks more you like a mean? lighter than the cart. Yeah, you go, it's more like a lighter. You know. I gotta say for the price point on this flower, and I think this is probably the second or third strain of this exact flower from this grower the quality has been consistent across the board you're right the price point is absolutely on point if not a little under where it should be which is good i'm no complaints as you know as someone as consuming this product <laughs> i got no complaints there but uh yeah as far as the well like we were talking about earlier right the look the taste the texture Breaking it up by hand, getting that perma sticky and that finger, little sticky fruit. finger thing. Mm-hmm. It like it, it's weed. <laughs> it's, it's real <laughs> weed. It's, it's fresh weed. It really gets you high. There's nothing crazy sprayed on it. It's they got some new flavors coming out. That they, it's not all so, vacuum packed and rock hard. How do y'all feel about the rosin, the wax covered weed? They the the, well, not necessarily keep covered. I'm gonna say this: if it's not from Wild Boys Exotics. Okay. I'm not smoking it. And well, I'm going to stand wild boys. by that. Wild boys. If it ain't from Wild I don't even want to hear about it because they is the only one that's doing the process right. I don't want no flower that you, your last year bud that you covered in some because you CBD get rid of it. Yeah. Because you then you put some powder <laughs> in it. Yeah. It's a nice so, I'm going to take it a step backwards just on a thought. It, Shout out to Wild Boys. Shout out to Zach Wood once again. Yeah. Already Zach Packs. Uh, when it comes to branding, you know what you're going to get. Exactly. You know who you're going to get it from. You know every time you go there, it's going to be the consistent, exactly. stable donut pack. Or if you go for the donuts or if you go to Zach for whatever his exotics is. Or if you go to, uh, uh, what's that one that goes to? Who's in? What's Who's in? Who's in with the chocolate? The wormhole. With the wormhole. With the chocolate. 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 I see you know, every every single like, person that comes here. He tells me yeah, 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 yeah. I say his name every too much. I'm like, you can't deny that this dude has always consistent. Always. You never heard always. a bad thing about no. Hughes and Table One since so from new customers. That's some old, of the best chocolate. It's the <laughs> best. You know, one of the first shows I ever went to with my mom. Well, the very first show I ever went to, y'all weren't even around. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> later. Uh, I was at one of the very first ones, motherfuckers. Um, no, but one of the very first shows I went to when it was on Poppin', uh, first table I bumped into, Houston. Yeah. Houston. Uh, got, got educated, cop some mushrooms, had a good time. Had a good time. <laughs> a fresh time, too. Never had a bad trip. Mr. Bombman has some amazing stuff, Mr. too. Mr. Bombman. Hey, well, man, that's true. Triple, uh, triple Y Exotics. Yeah. Third Eye Exotics. Third, third, third Eye Exotics. Yeah, Third Eye. Mm. 
You know, help you open the third eye. Man, mm-hmm. you might not want it open sometimes. <laughs> yeah. sometimes it, it's good to not know what's going on. <laughs> and see, this is, an ex- this is a perfect example, right? Everybody's sitting around, smiles on their faces, talking about local people. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody's sitting around like, oh, yeah, cookies. Yeah. Nah. They're like, oh, yeah. You know, I don't even like question. cookies like that what anymore. Is, considering what they do, mm-hmm. considering that he's a corporation. Oh, yeah. shout out to Mr. Bean. Much respect. Oh, yeah, great uh, businessman. Great I product do. sometimes. I was talking about sometimes. <laughs> uh, considering what they do as a store, as a business, going from city to city, they wear sleep. Well, he's in New Jersey. He's in mm-hmm. New Mexico. He's in Colorado. Colorado. He's in L.A. He's in Vegas. You know, you can find his brand. You're supposed to be able to go to his store. When it becomes legal in Texas, are we going to see him here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go see him. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be right why? there by the Galleria. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. right there by the Galleria. Why? And why would it be considered and in by the Galleria? Because why? It, it's so many people, especially Cali folks that migrate yeah. to Texas, that's going to be like, cookies the shit. Because they ain't cook, they ain't smoked cookies since they, since they left, left, left over since here. Since they left over. So they but I've like, heard Cali people they get give the us props. Pack with the beans inside I've heard Cali people get, I just had a Cali person give me props just the other day. They go go stand by what they know, and what they know is cookies. I I was once told it's not what you believe, it's what they believe. And they being the masses. The masses are ignorant to the facts most of the time. What did I say? The public chooses. The public will feed into whatever is the prettiest and what they're told to the most. So it's usually who's got the biggest advertising budget, it's who's going to get the majority of business up front. Right. Now, of course, you're going to get your tourist business, but your local business is going to taper off if your quality is not there. Cool. Yeah. So it's a bum rush, and then Cause you, you got, go on to the next one. You got to think, they go, the average customer going to be like, I can go get some, now. some mid from cookies or some mid from the street, but at least cookies got the name. When I go on social media and take a picture of what I'm smoking, you gotta see it first. cookies going to have the, big, the bigger, oh, you went to cookies and got some shit. <laughs> but... People who really smoke but, know that cookie. Bro, the so last what? good cookie drop I had was that Badu. And that was Badu. like a unicorn type shit he pulled from his ass. <laughs> like off the back of the boat somewhere <laughs> with, with with spider webs on it. Like he just mixed two things together and it came, and that came out, out like so perfect. Are, well, all respects to their flower and brand. Moving on to the subject. When these big brands come once again death of the small table no, how no, do we avoid the that table. well then how do we avoid it's that how do we build as a hold on as, is it too hippie for me to say how do we stop that we build no. a strong community and we stick together as local I said it's gonna take the first few months. That's the only way. We go back to the local. If your community the only answer, right? If your community not strong, the first few months when they open, it's gonna you're gonna be destroyed. Because that first few months, of course they go get all the business. It's gonna be the new. Everybody gotta go do the new thing. The masses gotta. Once that TikTok thing. Once that blue building with that big C. And then they go get some local artists to come spray paint a mural on it. All the TikTokers and the, the, the old heads, all the the hood superstars got to go pull up and cop six, seven, eight bags. And I went to Cookie. Yeah, the first few months going to be rough. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be rough if your community is not strong. So what about an Envision? And the Envision is, is you know, taking what we're already doing now. You know, stepping it up a notch with home growers, Texas growers, hometown growers, hometown vendors, hometown vapors, hometown edibles, hometown, you know, H-Town, you know, let's say it, San Antonio. San Antonio is a hill country. You can't tell me they don't have great soil up there. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, I mean, we've been uh, mentioning them. Yeah, I think yeah. we should go ahead and shout them out. Shout them out. This should definitely be part of it because I think we're going to end up reaching yeah. out to them. Yeah, and Where y'all at? Stuff. Give us a call. But, uh, Patrico. <laughs> oh, Patrico. Okay. Uh, you know, it's it's going to rely on 
text this week. Yeah, it looks right. like you know, they're doing some Just like work, Oklahoma relies on though, Oklahoma. Yeah. Oregon relies on Oregon. You know, the only reason why we know about it is because of the importers. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much what they are. We have an importer settlement. We have a wholesaler settlement. And then we have the vendor settlement. Right. Now we go all to the patient settlement. You know, the medical patients and what they need. It's, it, it's levels to this. Yeah. Okay, just like it's going to be levels to what the consumer wants. Yeah. You know, that should have been the episode name. Levels. Levels. <laughs> levels. <laughs> levels. Uh, levels. You know, it, it, many blessings to everybody. You know, we are, everybody wants to be a part of it. Right. Everybody wants to hopefully not just be rich off of it, but be have a lifestyle. Have a, yeah. you know, be sustainable. There are those that want to be humble. Right. And then there are those that want it all. Exactly. Choose your struggle. Yeah. Now, I do have to say something on that that I like is... Uh, I've met people in this in this circle of people that we know that uh, enjoy being back. They enjoy the creativity. You know, they enjoy messing with the machinery right. or dealing with the equipment or the raw materials to make things or like yeah. take something from one stage, make it into another stage, into something that people enjoy. And you know you can hand them something that is completely organic. Like completely healthy, mm-hmm. and like no, it came from the heart. It came from love. Correct. And like right. this is what is going to help you. Like you said earlier, right? This is going to help you reach this goal, or this is going to help you get to where you want to be on this level. Correct. And that's what we're ultimately achieving. You know, uh, it, it's the ability to offer a great product. I mean, the ability not just to offer product, to offer a medicine. Right. You know, a, an exit. You know, they call marijuana an exit drug. Yes, it's an exit from fucking pain. It's an exit from glaucoma. It's an exit from stress. An exit from anxiety. An exit from depression. An exit from introverted. Extroverted. I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, it's, it's an amazing tool. It's, it's an amazing tool in it. many ways, you know. So many uh, purposes. You, but many, what we're many trying many to... The ultimate goal is to provide the medicine. Uh-huh. Right. Not the derivative of. Not the the federal mandated guideline, just barely at the fucking line to call myself a whatever store. Right. No, we are a store. And by saying this out loud, we are putting ourselves at risk. We are pioneering. We are wild westing. We are whatever you want us to be doing. Pirates. Ultimately, (laughs) we pirates. Ultimately, we're just doing us. But we're nice pirates. Nice Nice pirates. pirates. Exactly. There shouldn't be no more. And it, you know, it takes the way. Do we have to protect ourselves? Fuck yeah. Right. Are we gonna be on point? Goddamn right, I am. Oh, yeah, you know, we're, we're, um, we're, but is it inviting it? No, of oh, course not. Well, not any store invite. Either. Not anybody invites the devil to the home. Oh yeah. You know, but is it? Is we gonna be ready for that motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> Always gotta be ready. So, we uh, but that being little, said, um, we wish that you know. I, I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to be safe. Right. I want everybody to go home. Right. You know, uh, and enjoy their shit at home. Enjoy right. their shit wherever they got to take it. Yeah. You know, if you're going to be in traffic with it, enjoy that motherfucker. Man, that's what it's for. Medicaid. Medicaid. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when it comes down to it, to back to the basic, it, it is about levels. Right. I will say that your brand is very important uh, to, to be, to try to be as, as upfront with the consumer, with your patients as possible. Right. You know, you uh, are they going to like what you have on your table all the time? No. You know, do I have, I've been to McDonald's in the past five years? Fuck no. <laughs> I try to stay away from it. I'm trying to lose weight. Fuck that place. You know, uh, but do I love McDonald's? Fuck yeah, they're fries. Ugh, they're fries. Especially um, when they hot. Yeah. You get some hot um, sauce yeah, fries. I'm out, I'm out. Long story short, uh, the brand is important. Right. Your, your customer service is important. Right. The way you relate to people is important. Uh, you know, what you have, what you offer for products, from flour to edibles to vapes, your knowledge in what you offer is extremely important. You know, uh, I want to know as a consumer, what's this do? Right. You know, really and, and I want to be really able to talk it. to you about it right. comfortably and not feel like I'm being a dumbass. You know, uh, what do you think it does? It's more, it's weed. Right. I know that, genius. <laughs> Hey, I kind of figured that. I'm in a fucking weed store. Fucking tell me. I brought myself here. Surprise me. I remember. Okay. 
Like, my experience. Why is this the reason why this? I want to, <laughs> and let me take it another internal depth. The reason why I want to give these people, anybody, somebody who steps in front of Green Thumb, in front of our table, the reason why I want to be so forthcoming is because when I was wanting and when I needed that information when I was a kid, right. when even as a young adult, even when I first time I went to fucking San Diego and walked in and cried in a fucking dispensary because I was fucking beautiful. Yeah. All right. Nobody told me anything. Right. Nobody guided me. Nobody said, here you go. Here, what you want? I didn't know what to do with my money. What you pick? What the fuck you mean? What the fuck is this? It's legal. What the fuck? Oh, I can't open it. My bad. Goddamn shit. It's supposed to be legal, right? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, I didn't get a true shopping and customer service shopping experience in regards right. to marijuana until yeah. I went to Vegas. Right. Vegas. Shout out to the Jardin. And the Jardin out there. Uh, I've seen them play before. Man, that place is fucking good. Good bartenders? Fucking nah, beautiful. Nah, they're bud tenders. It makes a world of difference, right? They're beautiful yeah. and they're knowledgeable. That's what, that's what was crazy, that they that that they were young people, mm -hmm. you know. Considering I'm an old head now. Uh, we're old. It's and, uh, anyway, it happens. <laughs> Long story short, they knew what the fuck they were pushing. Right. Yeah. You know. As a matter of fact, the best strain I got from them was memory loss. Mm -hmm. I still remember it. I still remember it. You know. Shout out, to, shout out to them once again. Uh, the customer service level. Right. You know, so when I joined the, the, the culture, when we were able to slide up in here, thank you, Father God, uh, we were able to, I believe, offer a different way to, to talk to people. Right. Hey, what's going on? I had turned on my salesmanship. I turned on my, my extrovertedness that I don't fucking have. Uh, you know, and I, I said, hey, come over here. Let me talk to you about this. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, considering that my every now and then I'll, psst, hey, kid. <laughs> Take it back to the old school. No, no, you gonna snitch on me? Come here, come here, motherfucker. You know, um, sorry, I wasn't talking to anybody in general. Um, but no, it's 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 the salesmanship now. Right. It's it's how comfortable, how customer service can you be? You know, I've gone up to I'm some tables where. Are you? Yeah, I've gone up to some tables there where they've got great bud, but they don't tell me about it. Right. They're just, maybe they're too stoned. Right. I don't know. But they're just looking at me, and I'm just like, hey. They're just, hey. What's that? Right, later. Yeah, later. Like, All right, you got to talk. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, is it me? <laughs> no, like, that's a big thing. Uh, you know, I walk past 100 tables simply because. They didn't get up. They wouldn't get up. No customer And service. if I go with my wife to any kind of event, that's a rule. If you don't get up and make an attempt to have a conversation mm. about your product as mm. we're standing there, if you don't care enough to talk to me about what you've got, I don't care enough to give you my money for what you've got. Mm. I'd rather have a conversation with someone, and I'd rather spend my money with someone that I like. Or, mm. yeah. mm. And it, once again, goes back to levels about this, goes back yeah. to branding. How do you approach your brand? How do you approach your table? How do you approach your salesmanship? How do you approach your hustle? Seriously, I can't say my hustle's perfect. I ain't, my hustle ain't perfect, but I gotta try something. Right. You know, I gotta engage somebody somehow. Exactly. You know, uh, I like to do it through humor. <laughs> I like I like to do it through weed, of course. Weed. Yeah. yeah. I like you know, beer and, and mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> wow, geez. You know, that's the thing. People see the green thumb, you know, symbol logo yeah. on any kind of thing. They know, right? Yeah. Exactly. At least I know uh -huh. there's gonna be somebody there. I can go talk to, like I'm not gonna feel all. And if you know, we don't know and they're not zone, here, we could direct it to, to us. somebody who right. has yeah, it. They don't have it. And that person, exactly and who we're gonna to direct you to, that here's the fun part. I love this part. Whoever we're gonna direct you to, if we're missing something and you have a medical need for a particular product and you just gotta have it, we know somebody that, that person is gonna give you the same amount of customer service we do. Right. That's the beautiful part about being at this table that we. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. That's what everybody eats. Everybody, everybody eats. It's, it's building everybody and strengthening eats. a community. Exactly. The table. The if table. I'm here, you're there. Yeah. If I can't reach you, I don't know who's there. That's it, man. Like I said. So before we get out of here, I want you to shout out all your favorite locals. <laughs> oh, man, everybody. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, out here. Everybody. We go, we go, hey. we go run through a nice little list so we can get some of these locals. <laughs> some some <laughs> great also got to mention. Oh, shout out to Big Rodney, Big Dog Big Dispensary. Big Dog Dispensary. But the, that uh, syrup is delicious, bro. What is he called? Is it 500? I'm not sure yet. I just got a sample of it. 
It's a 500 milligram. You should call it purple syrup. syrup. <laughs> Big it's dog purple, purple stuff. stuff. But yeah, it's a super strong grape syrup. Weed syrup. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, and hopefully will put, put us on the table soon. <laughs> I need about three Jolly Ranchers. I'll be straight. <laughs> Uh, so I told Mary, I said, this tastes like a great Jolly Rancher melted down. That's what it tastes like. They and, are, it, uh, and it tastes good with everything. Because yeah. the first day, I took a sip just just like off the cup, and I was mm-hmm. like, that's thick. And I poured some on the coffee. We poured it on, on, on turned this tea. <laughs> we put it on what? On the Sprite. Yeah. Uh, Everything in ginger ale. Everything in ginger ale. The Kool-Aid. Y'all drink all yeah, the fuckers. It Shit goes good with everything. Here. It does. And look, look, <laughs> see how if you just let it, it dissolve all the way in. Yeah. There's no separation in it. Mm-mm. It just becomes one with whatever the fuck you put it. Oh, in. You no. should you should really pour it up and then just put yeah. it in the ice box. Man, I gotta drive home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How far we we are. Like pour it up, let it sit for about ten minutes. Be fucked up. Oh. Uh, Y'all can go back to our favorite tables. I'm going to say Man. everybody. Man. Hey, somebody, I, I'm i going to call out the first one, Psychotherapy, H-Town Power Trapper, Power Plays, big up to them. They were the first ones that let us in. Okay. Uh, my boy Space City. Space Rick, City, Space Rick. City. Space City. My boy yeah, Milo, who's Milo. in. Milo. The Ball Man. Uh, Third Eye Exotic. I'm going to say uh, Houston Kush, Houston Smoke. Okay. Uh, Black Love. Mexican Cartel, that's the new up and coming one. Trend Black setters. Mexican Cartel, what's up? Trendsetters. <laughs> trendsetters. trendsetters. I oh, and big up. Speaking of trendsetters, we got to shout out, send a shout out to G Money. Oh man, she's G-Money. our home girl. Yeah. Yeah, she's G-Money. another one who's been dominant. She's been around for a long time. For a long Everybody time. Everybody knows been her. Been the Took a little bit yeah. of a hit not too long ago during the holidays. So we're gonna be doing our our next event is gonna be helping her out as well. Uh, definitely with some energy and some proceeds, some some stuff. So make sure y'all come out and visit her table. Exactly. Uh, she's gonna be out with us as well. Uh, it's a big up to G Money. What else? Yeah, hopefully. And of course, our, right. of course, our, our big farm, Empire Farms. What's up? Empire Farms. Definitely Empire Farms. Definitely Empire Farms. Uh, uh, that cherry. There was no more pre rolls. No more pre rolls. You used all. I think we smoked all we could and sold the rest. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I tell you it happens, man. It's 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 all it's really really like got to the last dollar, like bro, hey, man, man, we can sacrifice no man, more. Man. You know? We love the game. <laughs> we gotta make something. <laughs> <laughs> Our rule is always get high on your own supply first. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we smoked them all that night. Yeah, we got a problem. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> it's not a problem. It's just a yeah. answer to smaller solutions. <laughs> Empire Farms. Empire, Empire Farms. Farms. Oh, what we got here? We got the Scotty Pippen number thirty-three. They should be coming and out with some new flavors what's already. What's that? Cherry Gushers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cherry, they should be that cherry Gushers. Some new flavors. Yeah, I'm like, cherry Gushers more of my seed. Sticky. Yeah, it's that sticky Z like lemony. I like that. I'm not an OG type smoker. I don't know why people keep trying to push their life on me. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 so oh, you're an old man. I, I want that nice like. I t- limoncello is my perfect Z. Like, if I get some fresh limoncello, mm-hmm. I'm in love, bro. Like, I'm going to buy that till you mm-hmm. run out, and then I'm going to so beg you to get it, some more. Give him some. Fresh, no, I, it better be. I don't want last year limoncello. <laughs> I want fresh limoncello. Or the parade brand limoncello. Yeah, I, I want the... fresh, man. It better not be sprayed with no lemon zest either. I want you're putting out an ad. I want some authentic lemon jello. Right. In search of. In search of authentic lemon jello. That's what the Badu was mixed with. Yeah. Mixed with that lemon jello and that uh, Jet Fuel OG. Jet Fuel, yeah. That's, that's really what, gave it a smell. That Jet Fuel. I like, I'm a fan of Jet Fuel. That Jet Fuel is what, what topped it off. It was like, bro, what made you even pick these two to cross? What were you thinking? What were you thinking? <laughs> like, it was a hell of a mix to try to put together. A bunch of in a hat. Just nah, put them all out. He pulled that from the ball. He was like, "Let's go back to the '70s and see what was jet fuel, limoncello, <laughs> that Badu, and then get Erica Badu to promote it." I'm tired of that. Yeah, that was like the best deal collab ever. And that was the last one too. That was the last one. That was the last one. That was it. Everyone agreed. Okay. They're like, "All right, this is it." The, yeah, yeah the, the, it's the, the, Jordan don't play no more after your best year, bro. That's it. Like you leave at you leave that Badu and you leave the, the game alone. That's your unicorn. Mm-hmm. You pull yeah. it out every few years, every other season. Other than that, nah, brother. All right, so we 
Nico get up out of here. Who is sprinkles? Oh, we not even we gotta talk about that off camera. That's some bullshit. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you got we gotta give him knowledge. I'm just gonna here. put that down. <laughs> All right, so that being said, yeah. uh, Doctor Green, so thank you for coming, brother. All right, the real secret. I thank y'all for coming up, bringing out the hymn fires. Thank you to Uncle Curtis. Uncle Curtis. And on the next episode of the Trinity World. Damn boy, the Trinity Fires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,